Let's talk about how to enter your eBay invoice fees. So when you import in your CSV, it has lots of different fees listed on it for you already. But what I have found from looking at a few different eBay seller accounts is sometimes your invoice has additional fees that aren't listed on the CSV. So I don't want you to miss those. When you go back to your eBay seller hub and you're under that payment screen um, and you go to reports, you can scroll down to where you see tax invoices. Uh, again, it may say create one or something like that. Whatever you see here that lets you go to those tax invoices, click it. For me, it says see all. Then you wanna click the summary download of whatever month you're working in. They tend to change this up every now and then, but as of right now, when I'm recording this in May, 2024, they're only providing the past 12 months of these invoices. Um, again, that may change in the future. It hasn't always been this way, but just keep that in mind that you may not have access to these forever. So if you are taking a long time to update your books, this is something that could work against you. You want to try and go in and download these every few months so you don't lose access to them. So I'm going to click summary download for a random month and we can take a look. You will see some fees here. Now you don't necessarily need to enter the total due that you paid because some of these fees you already accounted for on your books when you import in your CSV. We just want to enter in any fees that we're missing that are on this invoice that we're missing from the CSV. The tricky part is just figuring out what fees here you've already imported in and which ones aren't included in this total already that you'll need to manually type in. So I do have a little bit of like a guide, a cheat sheet in the instructions um, to help you sort, but you may have to do a little bit of legwork just to ensure that whatever you're entering is not something that was already entered. So I'll tell you, usually shipping fees and promoted listing fees are not already included on your spreadsheet. So the shipping labels generally don't include those shipping fees and the ad fees, those promoted listing fees are not showing up on your CSV at all. So those two usually you want to enter in. So you may choose to enter that on your eBay invoice fees here. I'm gonna type it in um, as a formula in case I add multiple stuff to it. So I'm gonna start out with equals 2297, no spaces, and just hit enter and be done with that guy for now. To confirm those promoted listing fees, I'm seeing $10.20 show up here. Nothing is coming in as advertising. So I'm gonna go ahead and either choose to add that to that same 2297, which is why I said you could set it up as a formula and add them together. Or if you want to enter those promoted listing fees as an actual advertising expense, you can go over to your advertising tab and enter it there. Make sure you give it a date. I usually choose the last day of the month. Um, and if you enter it that way, you'll see it populating here. And that would mean you don't want to enter it on the invoice fees row because then you'd be double counting it. You may see some other things showing up on your invoice here. Final value fees and international fees, you have already imported those in from your CSV. You may notice like in the case of my final uh, value fees, it's slightly different than the fixed and variable fees that I imported in. That's because the CSV, this formula is already taking refunded and credited and adjusted fees into account. So it's like net of any adjustments or refunds you issued, like you've added those fees back. And these are your final value fees on your gross sales before taking any of those adjustments or anything into account. But it should all end up balancing out because those corrections, those adjustments and everything will show up elsewhere in your bill and you don't need to re-enter them. So you'll see here, if I actually take the 68038 and then subtract out the credited fees of $7.43, that equals $672.95. So it matches, it reconciles. And that's the next thing that I was going to say is sometimes you will have fee corrections, credits, or insertion fees listed here. And those are the one tricky thing as I explain here. So those are the three things on this invoice that I needed to add to the spreadsheet. Um, and again, keep your own little cheat sheet. You know, you can copy this table and add it to your own monthly notes 
for things to look out for. Hopefully your invoice is not as confusing as this example. Most of them I've seen just have one or two things on it, but I wanted to give you a complicated example in case you do see some of these things. And let's run through one more. I'm going to pull the February invoice just to give you one more example here. So again, we want to go row by row and figure out what was already imported in. This is another complicated invoice and what was not already there. So first we have an insertion fee of 30 cents. I have already crawled through my February uh, CSV for the month and that insertion fee is not here. So I'm going to enter that insertion fee of 30 cents. It's an expense this time. It's not a credit. So it's going to be a positive number to increase my expenses. Subscription and one-time fees do not show up on the CSV at all. So I'm going to add in that $119.90 here as an invoice fee. Shipping fees, same thing. I might double check that that $13.13 is not already included in my shipping labels. So just to verify, I'm going to go into that February CSV. I'm going to do control F and search for 1313. I don't find it. So that lets me feel pretty confident that that 1313 needs to be added to it. I could add it right here to the eBay invoice fees like I just did, or I could even consider putting it directly on the postage tab. Promoted listing fees, same thing. I don't have anything showing up for advertising fees this month. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that for the month. Remembering that February has fewer days in it. My next two are final value fees and international fees. My international fees match. My final value fees on my spreadsheet is a tiny bit lower. And remember I said I can check that. I can add up the 731 93 for final value fees on the invoice and I'm just going to subtract out the credits here this bigger credits number which is 1228 those are like refunded fees I got credited and that matches to my net fees right here 71965 so that lets me know that both this number and this number have already been entered what about my measly 15 cent credit here I don't see any insertion fees showing up anywhere on my CSV. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that 15 cent and it's a credit. So I want to reduce my expenses by 15 cents. So I'm going to subtract out that 15 cents. And that is another example of how I enter everything on this invoice into the spreadsheet and kind of verify if it's already been included or not. If you need more help too, I will leave some of these links in the instructions. eBay has a really good breakdown of what all these fees are if you need help figuring out why you're even paying them or what's showing up or what that means. You can dig into their customer service database for more information on that. You can also always click on the detailed download for any of the invoices and it's going to download a CSV with like a transaction by transaction list of all of the fees that make up the sums on your summary download. So if you need to compare the itemized detailed list of those fees to what's going on in your transaction CSV to see if anything is missing, you can do that as well.